I, I think innovation also makes very good uh, business sense and, and its connection to sustainability. Uh, and, and sometimes we tend to focus on things that are, that are big or high tech. You know, we, we've seen some innovations around something as lowly as the pencil. So normally the pencil is made out of wood. Uh, we introduced a line of pencils made out of recycled paper and uh, again, uh, saved a tree in the process. So changing the old phrase, putting pencil to paper, it's actually putting paper to pencil? Yeah, definitely must. Uh, if, again, uh, what we do in our company, 80% of our products are younger than five years. And if we uh, bring new product, uh, products to market, we are benchmarked with our competitors. And uh, if we do uh, not have products latest state of the art, be out of business. It's, it's a must. Okay, uh, we're talking about sustainability because we live in a transparent, collaborative world. So we're going to be uh, transparent and collaborative and open it up to questions. Um, and uh, we've got time, I'd say, for two very quick ones with very brief answers. So do I have any questions in the audience? And please be brief. Thanks. Yeah, we hear, we hear a lot about uh, uh, retailers as the new regulators. I have a question uh, for Mr. Brown. I just wonder, through your green products line, uh, how do you kind of match in what you're doing uh, what's, with what's happening in the, in the kind of the, the government regulation space? Did I understand what's happening about retail or in terms of sustainability? Or I'm not sure I really understood the question. Oh, I see. Well, I think that uh, we never, all of our initiatives, first of all, we start with a global perspective. And uh, I heard this morning in several of the, uh, the presentations, the, uh, uh, you know, think globally, act locally, and we really try to do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of the innovations that we're applying are coming out of our global sourcing office in China. That pencil I just referred to is actually made in, in China. And so we're weaving it all together in the global network that we're in. This, this is really for any of the panelists, but uh, if you could change one thing, you know, flip a switch internally or externally, that would open the door for you know, truly transformational innovation around sustainability. Uh, what, what would that be? And, and are you, you know, thinking along those lines? I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I think one of the, the issues that you have in business today around sustainability is a lack of transparency. Uh, there are really two types of companies, those that take it for its... its um, its media value and those that actually make it part of their culture. Uh, at Office Depot, we actually back it up by having an audit done every year of our sustainable uh, efforts. It's done by uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and there's a nice, thick report that gets issued. And I think if more companies uh, went that way so that there was truly transparency, then it'd be more pressure and it would have more of an, a true impact on, on the environment. Yeah, everyone gets their one wish, so. Yeah, well, the one wish would really be collaboration. Uh, you know, one problem we have is we're competing, but when it comes to the environment, I think we shouldn't be competing. We should be just solving the problem. And uh, when I talk about collaboration, it should be among companies, it should be between NGOs, companies, and governments. And that's something which I think is still lacking today. And uh, whether it's setting standards, whether it's, uh, you know, working towards uh, creating a new economy. If there was more collaboration, we would be much further ahead. Well, I, th I think I would basically add and build on the two statements I just heard, because for us, I think key on the wish list would be the transparency and a, an understanding amongst all various stakeholders to agree on one common set of standards, which actually enables and facilitates the transparency. Not that in the end, fast forward five years, probably we have hundreds of sets of various eco-labels and uh, where the consumer will have more and more difficulties to separate between what is good and bad. And I think their help and support and a collaborative approach by all stakeholders is urgently needed. Yeah, definitely standardization and a bit more speed in regulation. I would say a target, a national target for renewable energy or alternatively a global target for greenhouse gas emissions. Well, um, I think uh, that that's actually, uh, oh, thank you very much. I couldn't have planned it better. That's a perfect question to uh, have the, the panel go out on. Um, you know, it, it dawned on me that we have a lot of talk 
here about 2050 for a variety of reasons, and we're celebrating the 40th anniversary uh, of Earth Day. So we are halfway between uh, the first Earth Day and the year that, uh, by rough agreement, the world uh, has determined is really the point when we've got to reach some really ambitious targets. So um, we're at halftime, to pick up another sport, sporting analogy, we're at halftime, um, and I think the last 40 years have been a lot about raising the alarm bell, uh, or ringing the alarm bell, talking about why uh, a transformation is needed. So the second half, uh, when we determine uh, the outcome, has to be about how. It has to be about uh, getting results, and it has to be about making this uh, real and delivering value that uh, companies can provide uh, such that we, we have an economy that works for everybody and is, is truly sustainable. So um, we have our work cut out for us. Um, thank you very much. Please join me in thanking uh, the panelists.